I'm filing a formal complaint. It's pronounced compliment. Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and today we're talking about Futurama Season 11, Episode 8, Zap Gets Cancelled. This week's episode is another mixed bag, but for the most part, it was a lot better than I expected. It might have some of my favorite jokes this season. I object to these frivolous poultry charges. Frivolous poultry? You insult me, sir. (laughs) And there were definitely some echoes of what felt like classic Futurama. Some of the more topical stuff, once again, already feels like it dates the episode. Like, very 2010s in terms of a lot of the commentary. And I wish they spent a little more time exploring the cool new planet they showed us and less on making jokes about fruit. But let's get into it. This video will contain spoilers for Zap Gets Cancelled and Futurama in general. We open aboard the Nimbus in the midst of a battle with a ship that appears to be made of fire. Zap humiliates poor Kiff during a mid-battle shower on the bridge. Where's my Lufa? What Lufa? You! You're the Lufa. And he uses Kif juice to win the battle. You're juicier than I thought, Kif. Kif is fed up and makes a formal complaint against Zap. Through putting up with your... crap! I'm filing a formal complaint. It's pronounced compliment. And it's been a long time coming. Meanwhile, Leela wins only Good Employee of the Month, apparently in a streak of many, many times she's won the award. I did laugh at the bit where her pictures get more and more sad and disillusioned over time. Same, babe. Same. This does feel like Hermes Erasure, though, or is he just not eligible? There's a hearing regarding Kif's complaint. The chicken lawyer from basically all of the courtroom episodes makes another appearance and represents both parties. Kif gives his testimony. He took a public shower and used me to scrub his armpit. (gasps) It was a joke. Literally, everyone was laughing except Kiff. The chicken takes the job of the judge and finds Zap guilty. Your Honor, I have reached a verdict. I find my client, Zap Brannigan, guilty. I'm going to allow this. And he's canceled. Zap Brannigan, you are hereby canceled. You will be stripped of your title while you undergo mandatory sensitivity training. And for the duration of your cancellation, you shall wear the Scarlet C. The Scarlet Letter joke is a bit funny, but kind of odd considering the actual moral of the Scarlet Letter, which frames shaming Hester Prynne as unjust, whereas Zap arguably deserves a bit of shunning, at the very least, for his behavior. There were definitely some elements in this episode reminiscent of Brannigan Begin Again in terms of Zap losing his identity as a dupe captain as well as the general disregard he has for his crew. The sensitivity training angle for Zap also works really well and feels very overdue. Leela gets a call hiring her to replace Zap. Captain Taronga Leela, you put in an application to be a dupe pilot? Uh, yeah. Like an hour ago? You're hired. Side note, I love the gag of how she cleans her contact lens. There are so many funny little visual jokes in this episode. Leela announces her departure from Planet Express, and Kif takes some leave to spend time with his family. I'm taking some family leave so I can get bossed around by someone I like. Leela brings Fry and Bender with her. But the Duke did authorize me to bring along two trusted crew members. A first officer, which in a bold command decision, will be Fry. Well, okay, Bender sort of just muscles his way in. I think she actually was planning to bring the professor. And a chief science officer. Professor! Oh! I, Bender, humbly accept this prestigious appointment. That would have been an interesting combo to see. But it's fun to have our classic trio back together again. Zap gets sent to sensitivity training with Dr. Kind, who uses the method of see how you like it to show Zap the error of his ways. Sometimes our words hurt other people, and we need to be made aware of how that feels. It feels like this. Ow, 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 ow. I love Dr. Kind's design with his long and short arms. The other degenerates in the training with Zap are fine. There's a verbally abusive lady that throws food. That's ridiculous. You're obviously not the type to waste food. You should talk, you family-sized bucket of lard ass. Huh. Ow! That hurt in more ways than one. It hurt in two ways. And a robot who flashes people. <laughs> It's with a bright light. That gag actually did get a laugh out of me. The sensitivity training escalates to an allegedly simulated mission where they get verbally and otherwise abused to continue teaching them a lesson about how they treated their crews. This mission may be simulated, but my abuse will be very real. Set course for degradation. Leela tours the dupe headquarters and meets her crew, who are thrilled that she's not Zap Brannigan. At ease, crew. I, um, I know I'm nothing like Zap Brannigan, but I... 
and heads out on her first diplomatic mission. I love that she's the only dupe officer we see wearing pants and no sleeves, and everyone else, including Fry, is just wearing a scant. Excellent. Leela, Fry, and the dupe president are lowered to the surface by Bender via bucket. The bit with Bender lowering them was pretty good. See, Leela, you're doing great. <laughs> Hope my robot technology isn't scaring you. I also like that we get to see more of the dupe president, whose name is apparently Glab. She's fun, and it's the first time she's really gotten to do much outside of dupe headquarters. The planet, Tactilia, is full of gross, nubbly little guys who want to touch everyone everywhere. It kind of reminds me of these guys from Bee and Puppycat. Oh, he's becoming goopy. How often does that happen? It's none of our business. Leela tries to resist the nobbling, but the president tells her to respect their culture, damn it. Respect their customs. We need to win the hearts and knobs of these people. But they're so grabby. Oops. <laughs> um, the Quing of Tactilia gives them a tour of their civilization. Our civilizations are at very different levels of technology. No kidding. You travel in a bucket. Actually, that was... We have much to teach you. Their society is powered by air that gushes out of a hole in the planet. Behold! Oh, no, wait. Hang on. Behold! The Great Blue Hole! Right out the air, Russi. Oh, God. Why did I say that? I wish we got to explore more of their society, because what we do see is a really fun and unique concept. Amazing natural resource, Queen Airy. You should do everything in your power to protect it. Uh, 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 Leila, a word? Dupe has ulterior motives, though. They have an interest in the planet's resources. I may not have told you everything about this mission. These people are lovely, whatever. It's debatable. We're really here for the air. President Glab wants Leela to get them to sign a treaty that would give Dupe rights to the planet's air. Leela doesn't resist as much as I'd expect. Like, we've seen her go to extreme lengths for environmental and social justice before, but it's kind of weird how apathetic she seems to be about the diplomatic situation. Although I guess the nobbling might have turned her off of wanting to help them. Dr. Kind tortures the crew with a durian. Man, it does stink. It's like rotten flesh floating in a puddle of vomit. You wish it's a durian. No. No! They make a whole bunch of jokes that basically just amount to durian stinky. Oh. <laughs> my god, it actually has stink lines. I'm white, so take my criticism here with a big ol' grain of salt, but my understanding is that Southeast Asian people have been asking us to stop making these jokes for... years? And Futurama really lays it on thick here. The durian ends up playing a significant role in the episode, but it still basically just amounts to joking again and again that it's stinky. I don't know, I feel like Futurama's better than this, and there are tons of other directions they could have gone with how to end the episode, including if they really wanted to make a joke about something being smelly. And it feels particularly ironic given the subject of the episode. The sensitivity trainees fire on the Nimbus, still thinking it's a simulation. Meanwhile, on the planet, the dupe president is pushing for Leela to fondle the knobs to get the treaty signed. Tradition dictates that the parties begin with the ritual nobbling. Our captain will gladly engage in the nobbling. I will? I'd rather not. I said nobble. When Dr. Kind and the cancelled crewmen land on the planet, it turns out Dr. Kind was also cancelled himself for being a groper and has actually gone rogue. <laughs> No one cancels Dr. Gary Kine. He's, um, very diplomatically compatible with the Tactilians, though. He reveals an evil plan to throw the durian into the air hole and make it stinky. One. Enough to befoul this planet's air supply for centuries! The dupe president wants the Nimbus to fire on Dr. Kine, but Leela won't do it because she doesn't want to hurt the Tactilians that are fondling him. Captain Leela, command the Nimbus to fire on Dr. Kine! But he's surrounded by those poor, innocent pervs. Zap's training is complete, and he's uncancelled and reinstated, but he also won't fire. I hereby reinstate you as captain of the Nimbus. Order your ship to fire! Uh, thank you, Glab, but uh, I'm not sure I could do that. She makes Dr. Kind captain, and he fires on himself, and almost drops the durian into the hole anyway, but for Leela diving to grab it. She lands face down in the durian, and then submits to nobbling, but the durian dissuades the queen's desire to nobble because it's just so stinky. Queen Ari, I am now prepared to nobble. 
Don't mind the durian. I declare the groping optional. And the queen signs the treaty. Zap gives exactly the kind of apology you'd expect and is reinstated. I sincerely apologize to all those I've harmed. Especially Kiff Croker, the giant sex ladies of Amazonia, simulated Leela, and of course, the late... Dr. Kind. I do admit the commentary on how much of a theater the whole canceling thing ultimately is was pretty funny and accurate. Like, people act like it's a huge deal and such a terrible thing whenever it happens, but aside from a very small handful, the celebrities who have been canceled have mostly just kept working, even after doing some pretty egregious things. Dupe gives Captain Leela an award. I present you the Dupe's highest honor, the Medal of Valor. Zap's line here absolutely made me cackle. It's pronounced velour. And Leela is also dishonorably discharged from dupe for refusing to fire on civilians. Your refusal to shoot unarmed civilians when ordered was an inspiration to us all, as well as grounds for a dishonorable discharge. What do you think this is, the Peace Corps? Get out! The characterization of dupe here is excellent. I guess I just don't have what it takes to be a dupe captain. No, you have something better. You have what it takes to be Leela. Fry offers support back at Planet Express, and we get a sentimental-looking picture to replace the sad one on her plaque. It's a sweet moment between them that I really liked. In general, the way their relationship is portrayed is pretty wholesome, and I love that for them. Anyway, G2G, TTYL. P.S. Fry looks cute. Especially after all this time, it feels earned. And we end the episode with another durian joke. Yum, durian. May I slurp your cheek clean with my tendrils? Ah, sure. And thanks for asking first. I'm glad they at least acknowledge it's delicious, because I've always wanted to try it personally, but it still feels like they went really over the top with the jokes about how they smell, and it felt very unnecessary. I mostly liked this episode, but I physically cringed at politically correct and woke being used in this context. Isn't some woke-ass seminar! It's another one of those things that dates the show, and it just feels clunky, and Futurama is at its best when it's more clever than that. And of course, I found the durian jokes to be a bit insensitive and repetitive, like we get it, they think it smells bad. Ah, what a beautiful night for (laughs) smell-gazing. I did enjoy the weird little planet. I wish we could have seen more of Leela in action outside of the non-consensual nobbling. But both the planet and its denizens were delightfully weird and kind of reminded me of my three sons. Definitely one of the more creative societies we've seen in a while. I'm not sure quite where I'd rank this episode in terms of the season overall, but I think it's one of the better episodes in a season that has so far mostly been middling in terms of quality. I think next week's episode, The Prince and the Product, sounds fun, and the season finale All the Way Down, which is apparently going to play with simulation theory, has a lot of potential conceptually, so I'm really excited about that one. But that's all just my opinion. Let me know what you thought about Zap Gets Cancelled in the comments down below. With only two episodes to go, what do you think of this season of Futurama so far? Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Vita Zane.